Shatsy and UI was a huge mistake and it might be time to move away from it. But wait, didn't I create countless videos praising it? Yes, I did. And to be fair, I have been a Shatsy and UI user since day one. My website is built with it and most of my long form projects use it in some capacity. But here's the thing. The more I use it, the more I keep running into problems with its fundamental design. From how it's built, the dependencies it leans on, to the design philosophy baked into it. So, what exactly are the problems and what should we do about them? Good question. Let me show you. Let's go. Alright, so to get started, we have to first of all understand what Shatsy and UI fundamentally is and what it isn't. So, Shatsy and UI is not a component library and most people think that it is a component library, which is a huge mistake. It's actually the foundation for your design system, as they say. I know it sounds a bit weird, but at the end of the day, think of Shatsy and UI like a starter kit for your components. They give you a base layer, but the rest should be done by you. This means customization, extensions. What I mean by that is extending the components for your use cases and stuff like that. But let's be honest, most people treat Shatsy and like a component library which you can just copy paste into your project and then use. But since we now know what this is actually, I want to talk about my first problem. So let's look at the components. We have a lot of components, the accordion component, the avatar component, the button component and a lot of other components. Now if we look at the code itself, so I can just go right here to manual and then you will see the full code. What do you see right here? Well, we use two external dependencies and that's first of all Radix UI, also CVA, but that's not that important. The two main ones are Radix UI and Tailwind CSS. This means whenever you install a component, you don't just install one dependency, but in reality you kinda install two dependencies. So let's look at the dependencies in more detail. Tailwind CSS, as you all know, allows us to write standard CSS faster, it's more ergonomic and I use it every day. If we look at GitHub itself, it's a very maintained project with 90,000 stars, we always have new updates and in general it runs very well and it's not a very complicated you could say dependency if this makes sense. At the end of the day it's CSS which gets compiled. So that's fine, this is a good dependency and I don't have any problems with Tailwind CSS. But as you know there is a second dependency and the second dependency is Radix UI and I have a big problem with Radix UI. So what exactly is Radix UI? Well first of all again what was the fundamental idea of C and UI? Well it's a starter kit for your own design system for your own component library. But what makes it special? Well, it's customizable, you can extend it and it's accessible. And it's accessible because it uses Radix UI in the background. And Radix UI is a component library which is unstyled, accessible and open source. So these are like primitives. So if we look at them in more detail, you will see right here, we again have multiple components, the accordion, the avatar component, the checkbox component and much more and all of these components are completely unstyled and Shatsy and takes these components and styles them with Tailwind CSS. So that's fine, right? Where is the problem? Well, let's look at GitHub. This is the Radix UI GitHub repo. As you see, there are a lot of stars. This is all fine. But look at the commits in general. Last month, four months ago, two months ago, five months ago, eight months ago. Let's again look at the Tailwind repo. 19 hours ago, 20 hours ago, yesterday. So all of the commits are very recent. The project is actively maintained. But the Radix UI repo is kinda, you could say, sleeping. And now look at the issues. Almost 600 issues for this repo. Now there are no styles inside of here, nothing like that. These are just core primitives and we have a lot of issues and a very lackluster maintained project. This is not to say that this is 
is bad. Hey, open source is hard. I'm not hating or anything like that. I have huge respect for any open source project. This is no hate at all. Nevertheless, sometimes I ask myself, hey, Shared CN is a component library which I use every day. Every project uses this component library. And whenever I use this component library, I also use Radix UI. But Radix UI is not very maintained. There are a lot of issues and there are a lot of feature requests. So is it time to put the fries into the bag, call it quits, throw all of the components out of our projects and create our own custom ones? Well, I don't think so. So here's the thing. This library is still a game changer. It saves a lot of hours and it gives you very good fundamentals. It has a good foundation. But Radix UI is a big issue. I will give you an example. This is my website, Marshall Code. This is where I have all of my tutorials. By the way, soon I will rebrand it next week. But this is not important. Right here, I have like this search modal thingy and I created a video on it. Nevertheless, back then in the past, when you would zoom into this modal, it would be pixelated. And for a long time, it annoyed me quite a bit. I looked at GitHub and the issue wasn't a shared CN UI native issue. The issue was actually related to Radix UI. So my modal was blurry because there was a bug with Radix UI and shared CN UI could not do anything. This means we had an issue here, we had an issue in this repo and it was annoying. And that's my biggest problem. We have like this burden, this weight, which pretty much pulls this project shared CN to the bottom, which is not good. So what is the solution? Well, honestly, first of all, this is a question from me to you. Please let me know in the comments. But in my opinion, all of the teams should be more transparent. Like for example, shared CN UI, this whole project is now owned by Vercel. They are not very open, not very transparent about the future of this project. What changes will be made? Will there be any updates? Will they remove Radix UI? Will they change their icon library? There are no updates from the Vercel team. The same thing is also true for Radix UI. The team or Radix UI got bought by WorkOS. So WorkOS is an authentication provider. They bought a company and with that they also acquired Radix UI. Now they said that they still actively maintain the project but hey look at the repo last month four months ago two months ago it's not actively maintained this is my humble opinion and again this is no hate so in my opinion we should pretty much have a dialogue a discussion and in my opinion we should also urge the creator or Vercel in this case to maybe move to a different library to a different unstyled component library because there are a lot of options out on the market there is not only radix ui you also have for example react area which was created by Adobe and it's also managed by Adobe. We also have for example Base UI and Base UI is a library which offers unstyled UI components for building accessible web apps and design systems. And the interesting thing is that this library is from the creators of Radix, Floating UI and Material UI. And if you look at the repo then you will see hey this is actively made Maintained. We have 3000 commits, that's nice, but in general, look at the commit history. Four days ago, one hour ago, 30 minutes ago, in general, this is maintained actively. So in my opinion, we should really try to urge the team Vercel to maybe swap out Radix UI for a better alternative. And just look at the documentation. Here we have new components, a new autocomplete component, a new combo box component. For a long time, I haven't seen any new components with Radix UI and this annoys me a lot and I really think that we should make the change, the switch to a different library for the sake of all of us developers and also to future proof this library, shared CN UI. Alright, so now we looked at the dependencies and in general the problematic dependencies. But let's forget them for now. Let's forget Radix UI and all of the other dependencies. Let's look at the shared CN UI GitHub repo. Now before opening it, how many issues do you think the library has? 100, 200, 300, who knows? But there shouldn't be too many issues. At the end of the day, it's maintained by Vercel, right? 
No, that's incorrect. Look at the library, look at the repo. We almost have 1000 issues and 700 pull requests. Huh? What's going on? Why are they not merged and why do we have so many issues? Sure, a few issues will be feature requests and stupid issues, but let's say that 50% of them are real issues. That's still way too much. And why do we have so many open pull requests? Why aren't they getting merged? And I mean, let's look at the issues. So sidebar with display app normal. Okay, let's open it. So he added a description, an image, great, that's all good and here we have a few comments but these are just regular users like me and you where are the developers where are the maintainers there's no solution inside sure here is a pr but again this pr is still not merged for a reason xyz in general the problem which i see with the library with the repo is that it's not maintained as actively as i would like because this issue was created two weeks ago but i don't see any comment from any maintainer hey this is a very valid issue, we will fix it in the next release or in two weeks or in three weeks in general. There are no updates. Let's look at this issue. We have a description, we have a reproduction, that's all good. Let's look at the comments and right here again, I don't see any maintainer. Where are the maintainers? Why is this project not maintained? At the end of the day, look at it. Look at this library. It has 100,000 stars. People use it every day. And also in general, I see a lot of feature requests which date back to one year ago or maybe five months ago and nothing really happens. And the reason for that is probably A, because the team does not have the time to create more components. This could be one reason. But another reason is of course Radix UI. Radix UI does not offer all components that you might need. This means Vercel, the team, wait for Radix UI to add more components. So now we have the problem of two projects which are not maintained as well as you would probably want. They are huge projects which we use every day and we just need more support and more transparency. I want to know what the future holds for these two libraries. What will be added? What will be deleted? What will change? Nothing gets communicated to us developers, which annoys me a lot. And now there is one more thing I want to talk about, and that's that if a website uses chat, C and UI, it literally looks the same to every other website that uses chat, C and UI. And it annoys me so much you can't even understand. Like most people, they use the card component and then they don't customize it. This means every website has the same card with the same rounding, same size, same border with same typography, same font size, same everything. It's so annoying. Now, I'm not sure how long you are already a developer, but I think most of you still remember Bootstrap. Bootstrap was super cool. It was like this component library, which was quite powerful and it had its own like grid system, components in general, it was quite cool. But what was the biggest problem with Bootstrap? Whenever a website used Bootstrap, every other website looked the same. What does this mean for us? Well, we came full circle like we always do in the JavaScript world. Now, here's the thing. Customizing Bootstrap back then wasn't as easy. So, with Shad C and UI, this is different, right? Because Shad C and UI got designed around the fundamental idea of customizing and extending components. Yes, that's right. But literally, nobody does that. And that's also because it's not that easy as you might think. Now, let me give you an example. I think you all know what Zero Email is. This is a company created by Nizi. Support the company, support the email client. It's super cool. In short, it's an AI native email client. It works nicely. Super cool. Nevertheless, this started out as a standard chat C and UI template, actually. Because there was this template, the email template. Nizi just copied it, forked it, and then used it. This is fine. But after some time, he also realized, hey, maybe just copy pasting isn't that nice. We want something unique. So this was pretty much version two. Already a bit more custom. As you see here, we have this gradient button. It looks good, but still, to a trained eye, it looks like any other shared CNUI website. Look at the button, look at the input, 
Look at these buttons, look at the hover state. It looks the same, the same border radius, the same border width. It's the same, this isn't a bad thing, but I want uniqueness in my projects. Of course, Nizi realized it, and then after some time, they created their own design, they now have a designer and stuff like that, that's all nice. But he now has a professional team, and that's why Zero Email is now unique. But for most of us, we are not really designers, or in other words, we don't have employees which design nice things for us. And that's a big problem with shared CNUI. Sure, the idea, the fundamental idea is to customize, or I guess the creator of this library wants you to customize the components. But since we are not designers, it's not as easy as he maybe wanted it to be. And sure, there is this themes section where you can update your theme, like a green theme or blue theme or yellow theme. That's all nice, but the only thing that gets updated right here is the color. That's it. Like the border width is still the same. The roundness is the same. Nothing changed except the color. But now as an example, let's look at my website, Marshall Code. As you probably know, this website is also based on shared CNUI. But I customized it as much as possible. And as you see here, I don't have the standard border width. I don't have the same roundness. I don't have the same hover animations. My badges look different as you see here. In general, I updated as much as possible. Sure, it's still very shared CNUI. And UI heavy or very much like the default theme. Nevertheless, it's still more unique than the normal theme. And now you might ask me, hey Chan, if you are not a designer, how did you implement this custom design? Because as you might know, there's this globals.css file and inside of there, you have to update your CSS labels using OKLCH. This isn't as simple as you would hope. So how did you implement everything? Well, it's quite simple. There is this website tweak cn and this allows you to update your theme as you'd like this means primary colors secondary colors base colors typography border width border size roundness everything is customizable using this editor and i wish that chat cn ui would actually take this website and put it into the normal official website so that users can start optimizing customizing their themes. Because not everybody knows about Tweak CN, most people just go into this theme section, choose a color, and that's it. But in reality, it's easy to customize if you have this nice overlay as you have here. And yes, we are now finished with this video. Please remember, I'm not hating, I'm just at the end of the day expressing what I think, and I just want the best for all of these projects. I want them to work out, I want them to prosper, I want them to be used in the future. And that's at the end of the day why I created this video. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you have any recommendations? Do you disagree with me? Do you agree with me? Let me know down below. I will read all of the comments. So now, see you in the next one. Enjoy your day and bye-bye.